Just finishing up this email. Be with you in one second. And send. Hello, and welcome to the Meta Data Dictionary. Now, no, let me try it one more time. Welcome to the Meta Data Dictionary. You're here because the Student Data Protection Act states that an LEA shall create and maintain an LEA Meta Data Dictionary. Siri, what is a metadata dictionary? Well, it's a complete list of an education entity student data elements and other education-related data elements that defines and discloses all data collected, used, stored, and shared by the education entity. Simply put, whenever you externally share student data, also known as PII, personally identifiable, information. You have to share with the public using the Meta Data Dictionary. What information you've currently agreed to share, with whom, and for what purpose. As data is shared with new recipients, you'll need to update the Meta Data Dictionary throughout the year. This does not include PII that you share with USBE because we're not an external entity. The Utah State Board of Education has created a website on the data gateway that will make the process of entering the PII that you share very easy. So, without further ado, may I present to you ba -ba -da -bum, the Meta Data Dictionary. Ha -ha! Oh, I thought it'd be more exciting. In order to gain access to this site, your LEA admin is going to have to grant you the role of data manager in the data gateway. This is the landing page where your LEA's dictionary will be housed. Hi everyone, just want to interrupt the video real quick to give you a little helpful tip. We're getting a lot of questions from LEAs about where to find this page and it's a little confusing so I wanted to show you in the actual data gateway here. A lot of you are going here on the home page under reference library to metadata dictionary. This is the public facing data dictionary reader. You can't edit or add entries here. What you're gonna wanna do is come all the way up to log in. So log in. And then under my tools, you'll find student data privacy, metadata dictionary editor. And that's where you'll get to, you'll uh, choose your district um, and then you can follow along with the rest of the video. Thanks. Now, you'll only have access to your own LEA's data, but the public, they'll be able to see the data for every LEA. We recommend that very few people have access to enter data into your data dictionary, namely the data manager and maybe one or two other people who generally help with data entry. When you're getting started, you may be confused by some of the terms. I know I am. So let's go through them one by one. The first field you need to fill out is the name, and it's a mandatory field. The name is the legal recipient that your LEA has contracted with to share PII. For example, maybe you've contracted with, let's say, Amplify to assess student reading fluency. If this were the case, then you would put Amplify in the name field. If you contracted with a different vendor for the same test, say DMG for Dibbles, then you put DMG here. It's all based on the entity, organization, or person that the LEA has agreed to share student PII with. So be sure to review all data sharing agreements, contracts, or any records of sharing student PII. Up next is the subtitle field, and this is another mandatory field. If this is your initial contract with the vendor, you're just gonna put NA. We're gonna revisit this a little later, but for now, let's move on to the description. This isn't a mandatory field, but we highly recommend you enter the purpose of the contract into the description field. Using our Amplify example, you could write something as simple as to help the LEA assess student fluency. You know, something that provides more transparency for when parents, school administrators, or anyone in the community comes to look at your data dictionary. Let's move on to the justification field, which is mandatory, which means you'll need to click on at least one option, but you can click on multiple options as well. The objective of this field is to let the people know whether you are sharing data in order to follow with a federal or state law, or even both. The local directive may be a case where the LEA has a directive or policy that requires them to contract with a vendor. 
The other option may be employed when, it, let's say, a school principal or another authorized person who doesn't really fall under the first three categories has decided that the school needs to contract help from a vendor. Even though that one school is the only one that's contracted with that vendor for this purpose, it still needs to be documented in your data dictionary. Even the educational applications that individual teachers use, if they use PII, you've got to enter them into the data dictionary. Let's talk about the justification name. If you mark state or federal in the previous field, then there should be a law attached. You should name the law and section that justifies your sharing student PII with the vendor. For example, it could be 53A 15 2001. If it's being mandated by an LEA or superintendent, you could put down references to meeting minutes or memorandum, anything that could be used to quantify or qualify as proof or reasoning. If you selected other as the reason, then it could be because the school principal decided that uh, using a certain educational application would be really beneficial for the students. So you could write something like, Principal so-and-so decided on February 24th, 2017 that we should start using this to test our students' reading fluency. Something written that can be referenced, like a memo, is preferable. Below this is the URL link. If there's any supporting material or relevant law that you mentioned in the justification field, then you should include a link to it here. Now this isn't a mandatory field, but it is certainly useful for providing transparency with the public and letting them know why exactly you're sharing this student PII with a vendor. Up next, notes. These aren't mandatory, but you can use them to clarify any information from any of the previous fields you filled out above. Maybe mention why you're only sharing certain data elements for a subset of students. For example, you're only sharing information on students with IEPs or 504s. Up next, FERPA exceptions, which is another mandatory field. If you're going to be sharing student PII, it needs to fall under one of the following FERPA exceptions. Auditor evaluation, studies, school official, directory information. Be sure you understand which of these reasons apply and mark only one. The last section is mandatory and it's data elements. This is where you're gonna enter the specific data elements that you're going to share with the vendor that you mentioned in the name field above. There are many pre-populated elements that will appear here from the common education data standards, and we highly recommend that you find one from the list that applies. If the data element you want to share doesn't really fit with anything on the list, you can create your own data elements, but please use this feature sparingly and precisely. Mark all of the data elements that apply to this particular recipient and then click Save Changes. And that's it. That's how you insert a data element. Thanks for, oh, that's not, there's more? I gotta do more. Okay, there's one or two more things I need to show you. If the name and subtitle are identical to an entry previously created by you or another LEA, it'll populate the rest of the fields for you. Once they populate, you can change the fields so that they fit with what you have specifically contracted for. This is gonna be helpful for that subtitle section I told you we were going to revisit. Anytime you make an amendment to a previous contract, you should be creating a completely new data entry. Say you contracted with Amplify to assess reading fluency, but now you've decided that you want Amplify to assess reading comprehension as well. So what you would do is you'd type Amplify as the name and then NA as the subtitle. And the reason you're doing this is because NA was the previous subtitle. Once it does this, it's gonna populate all of the fields for you and then you can go through one by one and change whatever needs to be changed. So you could change the subtitle to something like Amendment 1. If this time around it's a, a federal law that's requiring it, not a state law or something like that, you could change that as well. You can modify all of them, but the ones that are the same, you just keep the same. It saves you time. Don't forget to hit that save button when you're done. And here's what your finished product will look like to the general public. We remind you that this should be updated as often as possible. We hope this tutorial has been helpful and we wish you the best of luck in setting up your Meta Data Dictionary. P.S. If you have any questions, you could contact this person at USBE.